that right there, that's the sound of the end of winter approaching on Lake Superior in the twin ports of Duluth Superior. The shots and sounds of ice moving up on Superior shore were taken outside the historic Glensheen Mansion in Duluth. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. We're just getting started with our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. We have a breaking news alert this morning. A 20-year-old man is dead, a teenager is injured, and police are trying to find the person suspected of the shooting, who they consider armed and dangerous. Police in Bemidji got the call last night about the teenager with a gunshot wound at the hospital. Then another call about a dead body outside a home. Police are looking for 18-year-old Antonio Parkhurst of Bemidji, who they say fled the area on foot with a handgun. Now, he's a Native American man with short black hair, brown eyes, and a slender build. He was last seen wearing a red sweatshirt. Now, if you spot him, call police right away and do not approach him. A former labor union official in North Dakota who is facing embezzlement charges is headed to court next month. KFGO News is reporting that Chad Waldock was arrested on Friday. He's accused of stealing more than $100,000 while working as the treasurer of the local 980 union representing sheet metal, air, rail, and transportation workers. Court documents allege the thefts happened between January 2012 and October 2017. The flu season has turned tragic for one South Dakota family. A young boy in the Sioux Falls area has died from flu-related complications. The child's school superintendent confirms that Rylan Anderson died Sunday after being admitted to the hospital on Friday for influenza A. South Dakota has had seven other flu-related deaths this season. Now nine minutes before the top of the hour, let's check that forecast. And Lisa, you might wake up and find a little light coating of snow out there. That's right. We saw some come down last night. There are still some areas seeing some light snow this morning as well. And mostly cloudy skies, but we've got a nice little sliver of sunrise here as we're looking off to the east on our Storm Team SkyCam network. And we'll get some more sunshine as we progress through the day. But this morning, the clouds are in place. We've got an Arctic front moving through that's going to be bringing the clouds and some wind too for today. So conditions looking a little bit snowy still this morning down in the south and west. You can see those snow showers right along the state line. They're dropping very slowly south as they're moving eastward. So they'll have some impacts again on this uh, southern end of our viewing area south of I-94. And we're looking at Dickey County, kind of the one focus here in the region where we're looking at that snow at this point. But it is moving over into Sargent County right now as well. So that's the focus. There are some other areas reporting some light snow out there, but likely seeing some blowing snow too with the wind picking up and so that means the temperatures we're at right now with that northwesterly breeze blowing in we don't see much change for today that cold air keeps those numbers down and we're right at six degrees in Fargo and four in Grand Forks so looking at some conditions that are going to be uh, a little less than pleasant we'll say this morning we're looking at some conditions that are going to pick the wind rather that will pick up you could see some steady speeds out of the north or northwest through the morning hours into the teens some gusts getting into the 20s at times and again, that leads to a little blowing snow to lead to some wind chills that are below zero throughout the day and very little temperature change as we work our way through the morning and again into the afternoon and getting a little bit of sunshine, especially in the second half of the day. So that cold air takes over tonight. We're going to see temperatures dipping down into the teens below zero. Factor in that wind, wind chills 20s to 30s below, so getting dangerously cold. Wednesday will be our most frigid day of the week, and even Wednesday night staying on the cold side. But we're working on warming things up. By the time we get into the weekend, we'll be seeing temperatures back into the 30s. And now for a look at traffic, here's Devin Fry with the Valley Today's Traffic on the Moon. Thank you, Lisa. We're going to be finishing up our morning on I-29, heading northbound toward Grand Forks. We are making our way toward that exit now down 32nd Avenue. Now, you can see how uh, how much it's built up since we started this morning. It, it was a very light traffic flow when we started off the day, but it's been increasing little by little throughout the morning, which is an honestly pretty ideal situation. It's kind of just now getting to the point where it's getting a little bit more crowded on the roadways, as we'll hopefully see by the 
the interstate when we turn on here. But as far as road conditions go this morning, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about how those are looking with the snow that we got. But overall, uh, the main problem areas are intersections on the less traveled side roads. When I was going down 45th Street earlier, there was a good example of that. There was a little bit of snow buildup and the uh, crosswalk or in the middle of the intersection, which could create some situations where if it could make it harder to stop or harder to turn. So those are going to be the areas to watch out for. Here on the interstates, they're thankfully well-traveled enough today where everything is, seems to be melting, which is good news. It's mainly just wet roads here on I-29 today. Now, what day is today? It is Taco Tuesday, so I'll lay the day at Taco John's. For your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. At least one person is dead in the crash of a car in semi in southern Minnesota. State troopers say the vehicles crashed at the intersection of two roads in, or two county roads rather, in Freeborn County yesterday afternoon. The driver of the car was a 16-year-old girl. The semi-driver was a 57-year-old man. The crash report does not indicate who died, but the state patrol plans to release more information later this morning. Patrons of a popular St. Cloud, Minnesota nightclub are remembering good times there after it was destroyed by fire. The massive fire at Press Bar and Parlor started around 2.30 yesterday morning and burned for hours. Crews were fighting flames from the inside for about an hour when it got too big and they were pulled out to fight it from the outside. A Grand Forks man says he thought he was a goner when he was trapped inside his apartment during a weekend fire. Terry Lee says snow blocked his escape from his building in his basement a unit but he was later rescued by firefighters. It happened early Sunday morning in the 300 block of 4th Street North in Grand Forks. There is no word yet on what caused that fire. Some property owners in Cass County are shocked and questioning what they say is a big jump in real estate assessments. One family has seen an increase of more than $93,000 this year alone. And they're worried about their budgets because taxes are linked to those assessments. And the higher the estimated value of your home, the more likely you're going to be paying more for taxes. You can challenge those increases by having the assessment reviewed to make sure they're accurate. You don't see this every year. North Dakota farmers harvesting sunflowers in February. But it happened last week out near Bismarck when Dean Getz saw a break in the blizzard action. He used a warm spell to plow his fields after an October blizzard brought the fall harvest to a sudden halt. With the Summer Olympics just five months away, we'll get there. We are now getting a jump start by taking a look at some of the sports. The Valley Today's Abby Furchner joins us live this morning, continuing our 2020 Olympic series. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lisa and Jordan. I'm here at ATA Martial Arts where we're learning all about Taekwondo. It's definitely going to be on my watch list this summer. It is so interesting because there's a lot that goes into the sport that most people don't know about. And so they're starting to spar, but you don't just come in here learning how to spar. What does it kind of take to work up to this point? Well, first they got to learn how to work their body, mm. what the kicks are, what the punches are. Then you got to learn the distance because they got to know how close they are to their opponent, how far away they can get to them. So they don't hurt themselves or their opponent. And so when people are watching the Olympics this year and they're seeing Taekwondo, but there's also Judo at the Summer Olympics, how do you know the difference between the two? Well, Judo is going to be more grabbing and throwing the opponent. Taekwondo okay. is going to be the kicking and punching. Judo, they're not going to have the headgear on, the chest pads on, because they're not actually striking towards each other. They're grabbing. Interesting. Okay, and they're doing Taekwondo, so we'll step out of the way so everyone can see this. And they have pads on, but the pads in the Olympics, they actually determine your score. Yes, so if you have the, the chest plates they're wearing, we'll have sensors in them. So if you have impact to the chest plate, they have to have that impact to be able to score a point. Oh, that's really interesting. And, and their headgear will have sensors in them too, so they actually have to have impact on the head to just get scored points wow. of headgear. And so what's the difference between a punch and a kick? What is that scoring difference? Okay, punch, you can punch to the body. We don't punch to the head. You mm. can kick to the head, you don't punch to the head. So it's yes. not boxing. Wow, there's just so much to this sport. I mean, look at their balance. Look at how quick they have to be able to move. So you're definitely going to want to make sure you mark Taekwondo down on for uh, your Summer Olympics watch list. Abby Furchner reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. Let's get the answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. That question, researchers say having one of these at your desk has been shown to lower stress and anxiety. 
the answer is plant, which reminds me I need to water my plant. If it's dead, it probably doesn't Yeah, your succulents look a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, nice to have that green with that little fresh snow we got this morning. Yeah, we're looking at a little bit of snow still lingering here this morning, but there's also a front moving through that's stirring up some snow, too. So we've got a little lower visibility in spots with that blowing snow. That's going to bring down our temperatures today, too. We'll stay in the single digits. So uh, stay warm and stay safe on the roads. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. Join us right now on the Fargo CW.